Mr. John Swanson was born on September 11, 1943, in Chester, Pennsylvania. Mr. Swanson's father, Edward Swanson, during World War II was a tail gunner and his mother was a crane operator. Mr. Swanson also had five brothers and two sisters. As a teen, he worked as a grocery store clerk until he enlisted in the military. Mr. Swanson enlisted in the Air Force when he was 17 years old. After enlisting, he went into Lackland Air Force Base for basic training. From there, he would soon be stationed in states all over the country, and even some countries overseas. Before being stationed in other states, he received special training and said the most exciting part was being part of the Airborne Command Post Squadron Project Night Watch. From day one, Mr. Swanson enjoyed the military. I liked the, the traveling. I, uh, <clears throat> it was very good. The military was very good to me. Uh, During the time of John Swanson's services, he served in numerous places. Mr. Swanson served in Texas, Virginia, Thailand, Kansas, Vietnam, Mississippi, Germany, and Washington, D.C. A memory Mr. Swanson has from serving abroad was when they arrived at NKP, non con Phnom. When he arrived there, the loadmaster said to them, I said, all you guys, this is your home for the next year, and we looked out, and all it was was a big opening in the middle of the jungle. And I thought, oh, my God, living in a tent for a year. While in the Air Force, Mr. Swanson created many friendships, and today he still remains in contact with some of them. Every few years or so, they meet up and talk about old times. Mr. Swanson says that he can go to almost every state and he would know someone there. Mr. Swanson was a part of several units such as the SAC, TAC, Air Training Command, and Military Airlift Command. Although he was part of many units, Mr. Swanson spent most of his time in the SAC units. My day, if you were in any other command other than SAC, you weren't in the Air Force. SAC is short for Strategic Air Command and was a Department of Defense and a USAF major command. TAC is Tactical Air Command and is also a major command of the USAF. Also, John Swanson was a part of the NCO Casualty Operation. He was stationed at the Bergstrom Air Force Base in Texas. The most interesting case Mr. Swanson came across was with a grandma who had lost her son and would not accept the child he had with a Filipino woman. He had a young airman who, was, who married a Philippine girl, and they were stationed in the Philippines. And they were on a ferry that was going to another island. And <clears throat> the ferry hit another ship. And the ferry went down, and there was a few hundred people that drowned. And the airman and his wife was <clears throat> ones who drowned them. They had a baby. Her, <clears throat> the Philippine parents of the wife knew that the baby would get a better <clears throat> life in the United States. So they were sending the baby back to the airman's family, and we received the message when the baby would arrive. We went to the airport, picked up the sign for the baby from the casualty assistance office from uh, California, signed for the baby, took it out to the grandparents. Well, the grandmother when she answered the door and told us that that baby wasn't hers or wasn't a member of the family and, and slammed the door in her face. And all I could think of, here I am standing with the baby in my hands, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> I guess take it home <laughs> to the wife to see <laughs> until Air Force tell me what to do. Well, then the grandfather came out and took <clears throat> let us in and everything. But the bad thing about it was that uh, the grandmother never did accept the baby and the grandparents finally separated. Uh, but for, uh, I had to check the baby on a monthly basis, make sure everything was okay, make sure it had an ID card and grandfather was the 
could take her to the base <clears throat> hospital and whatever. But that was the, the hardest and weirdest case I had as a casualty assistance. Another part of the Air Force Mr. Swanson was in was the 1st Airborne Command Control. Those in this group were given the name Project Nightwatch. Mr. Swanson's job was to ensure the survival of the President of the United States during a nuclear attack. The plan was that if the United States was attacked, the President would board Mr. Swanson's aircraft. The plane would fly out and over the Atlantic and would fly up and down the East Coast. The President could run the country from their aircraft. Everything about the unit was special. The outfit was a special outfit, uh, and you were hand-picked, hand-selected, and it, it was a very good duty because we were a unit within ourselves. We didn't have to go to the hospital for sick call. They came to us. We didn't have to worry about going to the base theater. We had our own theater. We didn't go to the mess hall. We had our own mess hall. To get to us, you had to go through three security gates. The bad thing about that is if I would get a speeding ticket or my wife would get a speeding ticket or my kids would get in trouble at school, I would lose. I would never be able to enter. The, I would call the, my first sergeant, tell him the wife got a speeding ticket. He would tell me, where do you want to go? And they would cut orders, and I would be kicked out of the outfit but it was the best duty I had. Also, since Mr. Swanson's job involved the safety of the president, he got to meet President Ford and Nixon. Both of the presidents came to check out the unit, but neither went through a drill. The aircraft Mr. Swanson flew in was a 707 at first and then the 747. The switch from a 707 to a 747 came after a scary incident. It didn't happen where the security uh, communications went dead for the whole plane. And so when the plane, plane landed, the aircraft commanders, the squadron commander, the maintenance chief, <laughs> and the operations officer all wind up in front of the, the president at the White House want to know what happened. So the Air Force was always saying that it was too much communications put on that airplane. So that is when they ordered the 747. And <clears throat> we got that 747. And it was one Hummer of an airplane. This incident, 747s were used to avoid a security failure in the future. Also, while overseas, Mr. Swanson found ways to stay in contact with friends and family. He wrote and mailed letters as well as recorded tapes of him talking and mailing them so his family could hear his voice and make sure he's okay. While overseas in other countries, Mr. Swanson did not have a lot of recreation time. In Vietnam and Thailand, he and the other men worked around the clock. You had a job to do. If it took you eight hours, you, you did it. Then it was something else come up. In the few times Mr. Swanson had spare time, he wrote letters back home and did laundry. On three special occasions, he flew into Saigon and was allowed to make a three-minute phone call to his wife. After six months of being in Vietnam, Mr. Swanson had one week off, which was called R&R. &R. During this time, Mr. Swanson went to Hawaii with his wife. After serving in the Air Force for 21 years, Mr. Swanson earned many awards. One of the more prestigious medals he earned was the Expedition Service Medal. He earned this medal because he was a part of the group of Americans who entered a territory or country first. Another award Mr. Swanson earned was the NCO Academy Ribbon, which he earned for his academic achievement. When the Vietnam War ended, Mr. Swanson was in Washington, D.C. with the 1st Airborne Command Control Unit. Mr. Swanson returned home by flying out of Saigon. When he arrived in the States, Mr. Swanson was walking through an airport in San Francisco, and a few civilians started to say nasty comments to Mr. Swanson and his friends. Mr. Swanson and his friends stopped the comments, and afterwards, Mr. Swanson boarded a flight to Dallas to meet his kids and wife. Also, when Mr. Swanson returned home, he had to adjust to civilian life. Mr. Swanson was lucky because he made the military into a career. See, in my case, I stayed in the service. So when I went to a, a base, there was always guys that went through the same things I did, or similar things, and you could sit and you talk. So you didn't have 
you know, whenever you felt down low and all that, you didn't let it get to you because you talked to other people. Where the guys that got out and went home didn't have nobody to talk to. And then back then, you know, the VA, it, to this day, I don't want no parts of the VA. But, you know, they had nobody to talk to. So I said, to me, I had an advantage over the rest of them because when I got feeling down and low and everything, I could go and talk to a buddy of mine that I knew that went through the same thing. He understood what I'm going through, and when he talked to me, I understood what they went through. After separating from the military, Mr. Swanson worked at a post office. He worked his way from sorting mail to a management program. Mr. Swanson became a manager and ran the CF section in Waco, Texas. Mr. Swanson said that it was a lot different for him to be in charge of a bunch of ladies than a bunch of guys in the military. Thinking back on the military, Mr. Swanson tries not to think of the bad parts. Mr. Swanson keeps positive by thinking that out of his 20 years of service, only a few were bad. Whenever he is reminded of the bad times, Mr. Swanson thinks about the good ones, which helps him forget. Mr. Swanson learned a lot from his time in the military. He learned that life is short, so if you're going to do something, do it. Also, just enjoy life. Finally, Mr. Swanson's message for a future generation is, America is a great country, and that <clears throat> people shouldn't take it for granted. Uh, freedom is not free. 